as we know, with the increase of domestic violence in South Africa and the growing concern for the safety of women and children, today we welcome Shinaz Baruk from Penny Appeal, Fisani Mahlangu from National Shelter Movement SA, and Nuran Osman from Ihata Shelter to discuss the safe haven of shelters for women and children. Welcome to The Loft, ladies. Now, Shanaz, I have to start with you. Please may you tell us a bit more about your organization and why you decided to fund Ihata Shelter. Sure. Good afternoon. So Penny Appeal is a locally registered relief and development organization. We focus predominantly on providing a range of projects uh, focused on community development. And the Ihata Shelter is one such project that really caught our eye in terms of the sterling work that it does in the community. Very often we look for um, strongholds or strong points within a community, things that are able to speak to our strategy in terms of inculcating values, in terms of restoring dignity to communities. And having a women's shelter that focuses specifically on women and children is something that's really close to our hearts here at Penny Appeal in South Africa. Um, it's really important for us to be able to mold um, females into becoming, I would say, better um, strong points within family units, be able to inculcate in them values that they can then take back to their communities and households. And overall, I think it's just a really fantastic way for us to be able to um, get involved in the movement um, and fulfilling our duties in civil society and being responsible for female empowerment and creating avenues and means, um, hopefully for long-term sustainable change in our societies, especially around female empowerment. And Shana, speaking about things that are very dear to your heart, what is the importance of funding a shelter through an organization like yourself or directly to the shelter? For females to have a safe space and children to have a safe space that they can go to when they're facing the challenges that we're hearing about every single day, you know, the escalation in uh, female abuse, in, in children, child abuse, I think having a safe space in a community it's vital, every community needs to have that. And we need to really honor the communities in the areas that do exist um, and protect the existing shelters that are available. It seems like Penny Appeal is right on the money with that one. Now, Nuran, moving to you. Please may you tell us what Ihata offers and how does Ihata help women who want to seek the shelter that they need? What programs do you offer and how does it assist them getting back on their feet? So essentially, um, Ihata Shelter is a holistic shelter for abused women and children. Um, and we're not just looking at the bed and breakfast kind of service. We're looking at reshaping and as Shana said, we're looking at molding the whole woman so that she returns to society as a whole and she is able to one, be beneficial to herself, her family, her children, and also to community and society. So it's not just about um, you know, you come in, you have a safe space to stay. It's about dealing with all of your issues past and present. It's about reshaping um, your paradigm around victimhood. Um, and it's about coming out as a survivor and coming out as a whole woman. I think essentially our programs are all geared towards the empowerment of women, right down to the final stage where we look at career development and then placing the women um, in jobs, for example, where they could become financially independent and therefore free to do and think as they, as they feel, as they want. Um, but it's really about shaping her whole life. Nuran, have you seen an increase in the amount of women that have contacted shelters, especially during and after the hard lockdown period? Can you share what steps they can take and how women can find help once they've decided to approach a shelter? I think I want to say yes and yes and yes. We absolutely have seen an increase. I think one of the ways that I want to encourage women, particularly during lockdown, um, to access help is to call us. We've got, um, in partnership with Penny Appeal, we've got a helpline, um, but also our office um, has a line that, that, that links to a mobile number. So if you call our office, you can reach us and don't stay because you think things will get better. It is a very dangerous time. People, I mean, we've witnessed a lot of killing. We've, we've witnessed femicide, essentially. And so I want to encourage women to say enough is enough. Um, you know, the lockdown contributes to the pressures already existent in the household. I think a lack of food, lack of resources, all of that makes matters worse. And so really, it's probably not a good idea to stay, but to access shelter services, um, and then we can work from there. One of the things that Penny Appeal graciously funds is also programming for perpetrator intervention. So we're not just working with the woman and encouraging her to leave. We're also looking at family reintegration, but also helping the perpetrator access services so that he can be better. And so that perhaps if 
she wants, we can rebuild the whole family. Thank you for that, Nuran. Fisani, let's touch base with you. With 78 shelters around South Africa under the NSMSA umbrella, do you find that women are not willing to contact shelters for help because they feel ashamed? And how can we change the negative perception of shelters that women have around them? Firstly, to answer you, I would say the National Shelter Movement is a non-profit organization, which is registered with the Department of Social Development, and uh, it was established in 2008. Its main objective is to network, to lobby, to advocate on issues of gender-based violence and sheltering for abuse women in South Africa. So to answer the question on stigma around shelter, I would say this is not actually happening across the country, but it's happening in, in certain areas. So I would answer it by saying that it's not really happening across the country, across the world. But many women access shelter in the great field of stigma at all. It's just those two areas maybe where you find that um, following traditions and especially African traditions still consider the norm. So I would say on that note that women should actually go out and seek sheltering, go out and seek shelter services through various platforms such as uh, visiting the police stations to report abuse, visiting area social workers in their areas or visiting the shelters themselves because we have in some areas where these shelters are actually open for walk-in clients who actually come in and report uh, violence. So there is no stigma at all. It's just a few pockets will find stigma happening, but otherwise, in general, there is no stigma attached to taking shelters or to accessing shelters. I love the fact that you've enlightened us and shown us the cultural aspect of it, something that we tend to forget in our current um, modern life and modern living. So I thank you for reminding us that, you know, regardless, it is okay and it is safe to seek that help. So what advice, Fisani, do you have or can you offer the women of South Africa so that they can feel comfortable when seeking help? I would advise women to seek help when they still time. Once at this start, even if maybe a woman doesn't want to go into a shelter, but at least visit a social worker or a counselor near you and talk about the situation that is happening at home. Because it is best to prevent violence before it actually spreads and becomes something bigger or it can actually lead to death. Because uh, women should also be aware that when they are abused in their homes, the children themselves are also looking at this abuse, they are also, also experiencing it, even if the father and the mother are not physically like, abusing each other, but the emotional aspects of it affects the children. So I advise women to take action when they still time, when it's still early, and they can use a variety of channels, police patients, social workers around them, community leaders, Beautifully said, Fisani, and we also have all of that information as to how you can seek refuge and a shelter on Afternoon Express's website, and then hopefully you can touch base and get the help that you so desperately deserve. Ladies, before we bid you adieu and say goodbye, finally, any final words of how viewers can get the assistance that they need? I think it's imperative that females who find themselves in positions um, where they are vulnerable, where you are in an abusive situation, First and foremost, I think it's important to say you're not alone and there are avenues for you to explore. There's always an avenue and it just starts with you being able to recognize that you're not alone. There is a solution. There is a way out. A final thought from you, Fisani. I would encourage women to consider taking shelter services or consider visiting social workers to ask for help when they are in situations of gender-based violence because the earlier they seek help, the better. From what we have experienced, the, the statistics in the country show that women end up dying. So for you to protect yourself, rather seek help when it's still too early. Shelters are available across South Africa. Please seek help when it's still early. Seeking help when it's still early is what it's all about. And again, just to reiterate, we do have all of that information on Afternoon Express's website. I mean, Nuran, I feel so incredibly grateful to have shelters like yours out there for women and children. Any final words from you? So I'd like to say to victims of gender-based violence that you are not alone. There are many women like you with the same challenge as you who will stand by you. We are here for you. And through the generous support of Penny Appeal South Africa, we are able to work with both victims of gender-based violence and perpetrators. Um, to the women who are struggling through their challenges, call us. We can help. And to the women who are not ready to leave their perpetrators, we can work with him too.
And on those final words, thank you so much, ladies, for all of the work and the contribution that you're doing in South Africa. We appreciate it. Cheers. Now, there are so many women in our country that feel alone and helpless. And if you or know someone that needs help, please make use of any one of the contacts or the organizations that we've chatted to today. You are not alone in this, and help is out there.